experience. I think it's time to have uh, some perspective here. And uh, this is, uh, uh, I feel like you're, you're, you're like, I've known you forever. Uh, but you are a new friend. This is a new friend and uh, who has a uh, wonderful uh, happening event once a month at uh, a place called Joe's Pub over there at Lafayette Street. And uh, there will actually be one tomorrow and it's called The Meeting. And yes, and this person will premiere a new solo work here at the club uh, in April and uh, called uh, A Love's Lover's Refrain something? Okay, well you'll tell us what the correct title is. But uh, please, uh, let's have some perspective. Yeah. And welcome Mr. Justin Sayer. I feel very sleek, and I don't know why. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. We're celebrating the holiday season, which has never been the same to me since I discovered that alcoholism was a thing. <laughs> alcoholism in my childhood was like Santa Claus. We believed it didn't exist. <laughs> and, and yet it was creeping all around us. <laughs> no, um, I, I like jokes that make you, you roll into laughter because I'm making you uncomfortable. So I hope that's the kind of seven minutes you're in for, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, no, um, I only, it's funny because I do like all this Christmas stuff, but, because I like nostalgia for things that didn't happen, you know? But I insist on wearing, like, black and Dawn Davenport, because she was the only person that was ever honest to me about Christmas. And, um... All right. They don't get John Waters references. <laughs> Write that down for later. I like to talk to myself on stage, since I don't want you ever to respond to me. Uh, <laughs> no. I, um... I've been practicing. What's happened, as a gay adult, and especially in, in the modern age where we're being accepted more and more, I'm uncomfortable with that. So I think of little ways to destroy my family's holiday from within. And it's, it's almost like performance art, because really I, I buy outfits that are going to offend them. I, I wear two tops for two days. I mean, it's just real dark, ladies and gentlemen. I figure out how I can just... I, this year, my trick is that I've learned how to say Syria without moving my lips. So that I can just drop it around conversations and let the Republicans roll, you know? My mother, my mother, uh, when we were children, would leave the price tags on everything to show how much she loved us. And, um, and now, for Christmas, she always says, well, you know, you can fill up an Amazon cart and just order it and we'll have it sent to the house. So I order just nothing but gay porn on <laughs> Knowing that she'll just click a button, she won't know, and then I'll be sitting there Christmas morning so excited because there's cops on literally everything I own. Yeah. I do a lot of that. I do a lot of offensively reminding them that I'm a homosexual. I have a 91-year-old grandfather who only first refers to women as queens. And he says, are you dating any queens? Which I do five minutes on, right there. Like, am I? Let me tell you. <laughs> this year, I'm going to just say DP. I'm going to do a lot of double penetration humor, but shorten it so they don't know what I'm talking about. So they'll be, my mother will be like, how's life in California? I'll be like, you know, it's great. I'm getting really into DP. What's that? Um, it's a kind of exercise. 
Tux takes a lot of balance. Surprisingly, a lot of balance. Because uh, it's like pistons. You don't realize that everybody has to take a turn. Um, and she'll have totally checked out, but for me, I'm ruining the holiday for her. And that's all that's important. Yeah. Because you can't. I mean, it's like you're except we're on North White. Gay people with dogs are kissing and selling things for Nordstrom. Neil Patrick Harris is every, everyone's happy with children. I was on the plane with gay parents and their children, and I was like, I'm always going to be cooler than you two. Yeah. I mean, your kids are nice, and you'll have someone to watch you die, sure. <laughs> I'll always be a little cooler because I won't have to spend my money on toys and education. I can spend my money on hookers and blow. Which is exactly where it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's nice to be at La Mama, isn't it? Yes. You, I know. You can come. Again, don't ever respond to me. I don't know why you did then. If we're getting into the holiday spirit, let's all start being passively aggressive rather than openly hostile. <laughs> I know. Again, these, I love these kind of rolling laughs. They are like, <laughs> why won't he stop? <laughs> no. Uh, so this year for Christmas, this is the plan. I'm going to tell you this and then I'm going to leave you with this. The plan is I roll in. I have an array of hats. <laughs> Because I'm doing a Colin Dolly Levi theme this year, where I kind of fix things around the house, but leave them mysteriously gay. I have about six vials of glitter that I'm just going to dump in the corners and then blow. So that years later, because you know, when glitter's in the house, it never leaves. It's like poltergeist. You have to get people in there. It's very upsetting. So there's a lot of glitter. I've ordered an array of gay paraphernalia. And, wait for it. I ordered, my friend is a wonderful transsexual and we were shopping for soft packs. Have you ever heard of a soft pack? Yeah. It just looks like a limp penis and it's made out of, I've ordered three of them from Amazon. <laughs> and they already went to the house wrapped. So imagine if you will, you're a 58-year-old white woman living in a cul-de-sac in North Carolina, <laughs> hoping that you get a gift certificate to a Starbucks or a throw blanket. And your gay son, who you can finally be a little proud of because he's working in Hollywood, opens up a box of three limp penises. <laughs> That'll put you off your turkey, I'm telling you. And I suggest you all do exactly the same. <laughs> Good night.